They used to make it in a movie. Hey! <laughs> Did you know Australia has its own living fossil? In 1931, two amateur bug collectors were out in the scrubby bushland of Western Australia foraging for insects when they stumbled across something no one had ever seen before. It looked kind of like an ant, but it wasn't an ant, but then it was an ant. It had all the horrifying features of a pale yellow wasp, but, but with no wings. So these boys scooped a couple of these ants up in their Vegemite jars and shipped them back home to the National Museum of Victoria in Melbourne. The Nash National Museum. It's one in Sydney too. Anyway, all of the insect people there just flipped their lids. These blokes had stumbled across this discovery of an ant that, as far as anyone knew, hadn't existed for millions of years. Like 70 million years. You see, because ants evolved from wasps, right? And this was like the missing link. But for like ants and wasps. Mm. It's like the equivalent of finding like a bunch of T-Rexes just chilling out in the wild, but like alive T-Rexes. <laughs> this was the greatest discovery in ant history. I mean, look, it was the 1930s, but I mean, it was a big deal. I mean, everything was a bit of a big deal in the 1930s, wasn't it? Hello. As a result of this monumental occasion, a series of expeditions took out to find more of the scientifically named Nosomomycia macrops. That's right, isn't it? But no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't find any more of these mythical dinosaur ants. They started to doubt these things even existed. But then they remembered, you know, a few in the jar back home, but they're like, oh yeah, the ants. Doris, Doris, you checked the ants are still there? Yep, we definitely found them before. Thank you. So with all of these setbacks, they just stopped looking. I mean, why would you just continue looking for one of the most amazing discoveries in ant history. I mean, <laughs> what would I know? So 50 years later, these American entomologists decide they're gonna come down under and try to find this legendary ant. I mean, why wouldn't you? Well, you've got amazing things like scientific equipment, degrees, funding. <laughs> yeah, American. Classic Australians, not wanting to be shown up by the Yanks, they sent out one more ant expedition to see if they could find these suckers. This is it. They were on their way. Their van broke down. Shit. A whole operation just ruined because of a dodgy gasket or something. Anyway, they're broken down in some backwater town called Puchira in South Australia, named after the Pokemon of almost the same name. That night, one of the scientists decided to go for a walk with his torch. You know, probably to pee or something. And he randomly shone his torch yeah. on a whole colony of these dinosaur ants, bloody thriving. Just on a eucalyptus tree, chilling. Like some 1500 kilometers away, you've got where they found them on this side. And you've got this big bite that's been taken out of the bottom of Australia. And they're over here, 1500 kilometers away. That's where they found the ants. So that means that in the endless emptiness that is the Australian outback, one of the very few scientists who could correctly identify this ant stumbled across it by sheer coincidence. One of the rarest insects on earth that had only been seen once, almost half a century ago. And all because his van broke down. If that's not Australian, I don't know what is. Be sure to give this a like and a subscribe. You know the deal? I don't need to tell you what to do. You got this. Did you know that we have out? Did you know that we... Let's get extra. Little bit of extra ant facts. What's so cool about these ants and why they're like dinosaur ants is because they forage in ways that they did 70 million years ago because they haven't evolved. So instead of working as a team, they forage individually. They just go out and they grab the stuff and they bring it back. They don't tell anyone and they just figure it out. And there's like this 20 to 30 minute window just before dawn and just they all just start coming back. Like, like they're pre-programmed. They but the most interesting thing is that when confronted, these dinosaur ants, like sometimes they'll like, they like go stationary and like open their jaw like, ah, like they're like, I'm gonna get ya. But more often than not, they just faint. Like they, they just drop and pretend to be dead. Kind of like those fainting goat videos. Ants. But 
like the fainting goats are like an evolutionary like kickback. This is just their go-to. Bug. <laughs>